Bill Maher raises a really good point here. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Bill Maher raising a very good point on his HBO show about the whole transgender issue. Now, disclaimer for the YouTube censors, for anyone that wants to get triggered, disclaimer. If somebody identifies as transgender or whatever they identify as, that's their prerogative. All right. That's what they do. I'm not into that lifestyle personally, but if they want to do that for themselves, then that's their thing. I do think that you shouldn't be able to be a child under the age of 18 and say, you know what? I'm trans now. Give me hormone blockers, puberty blockers, and things of that nature. You can't even get a tattoo under the age of 18. You can't drink under the age of 18. You can't even really sign contracts for yourself. I think Kobe Bryant, when he went to the Lakers, I think he was 17 years old and his parents had to be there to help him sign the contract. So, if there's limits like that in society, then that should be consistent and not just be given the pass when it comes to issues of sexuality. But for now, I digress. The whole point is, if an adult wants to do that, then that's their prerogative. However, what's going on lately when we have this explosion of trans identifying people or at least LGBT identifying people? Because you, you got different schools of thought going on. The first school of thought is, well, it's all natural this is just how God created these people. And the other school of thought is, well, there's a lot of indoctrination going on. It looks like more of the latter rather than the former because of the really high rates of increase over the past few years. Now, before I go any further into it, let's roll the clip. In this clip, you're going to hear Bill Maher talk about this whole situation. And after we get done with that, I'll come back. I'll talk about what was said there. Then I'll give you the rest of my two cents and my deep detail analysis. And then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. And finally, new rule. If something about the human race is changing at a previously unprecedented rate, we have to at least discuss it. Broken down over time, the LGBT population of America seems to be roughly doubling every generation. According to a recent Gallup poll, less than 1% of Americans born before 1946, that's Joe Biden's generation, identify that way. 2.6% of boomers do, 4.2% of Gen X, 10.5% of millennials, and 20.8% of Gen Z. Which means if we follow this trajectory, we will all be gay in 2054. <laughs> The answer can't always be that anyone from a marginalized community is automatically right, trump card, mic drop, end of discussion. Because we're literally experimenting on children. Maybe that's why Sweden and Finland have stopped giving puberty blockers to kids. Because we just don't know much about the long-term effects. Although common sense should tell you that when you reverse the course of raging hormones, there's going to be problems. We do know it hinders the development of bone density, which is kind of important if you like having a skeleton. <laughs> Fertility and the ability to have an orgasm seem also to be affected. This isn't just a lifestyle decision, it's medical. Weighing trade-offs is not bigotry. Yet when a book questioning the sudden uptick in transitioning children was released, a trans lawyer with the ACLU named Chase Strangio tweeted, stopping the circulation of this book and these ideas is 100% a hill I will die on. How very civil liberties of him. Chase, by the way, has just been named one of the grand marshals of this year's New York City Pride March, along with three other trans people and a lesbian. Huh, what's missing here? Oh, right, a gay man. <laughs> That's where we are now. Gay men aren't hip enough for the gay pride parade. And if you haven't noticed that with kids, doing something for the likes is more important than their own genitals, you haven't been paying attention. Dr. Erica Anderson is a prominent 71-year-old clinical psychologist who is herself transgender and who now says, I think it's gone too far. The LA Times summarizes, 
She's come to believe that some children identifying as trans are falling under the influence of their peers and social media. If you attend a small dinner party of typically very liberal upper income Angelinos, it is not uncommon to hear parents who each have a trans kid having a conversation about that. What are the odds of that happening in Youngstown, Ohio? If this spike in trans children is all natural, why is it regional? Either Ohio is shaming them or California is creating them. Maybe the girl who hates girly stuff just needs to learn that being female doesn't mean you have to act like a Kardashian. <laughs> Maybe childhood makes you sad sometimes and there are other solutions besides hand me the d saw. Gender fluid, kids are fluid about everything. If kids knew what they wanted to be at age eight, the world would be filled with cowboys and princesses. All right, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, shout out to Bill Maher for keeping it all the way real. Just pointing out some statistics that are kind of a, a perplexing. I don't want to say troubling. They, they could be troubling, depending upon how you look at it, but definitely perplexing and kind of interesting. It's like, hey, well, how is it that people that identify as LGBTQ was this small number just, what about, 70 years ago, maybe, and then 40, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, and it's, it's just, it's climbing through the roof. There's a rate of growth there. And if you go all the way to just a few more years down the line with the same rate of growth, then it's going to look like it's impossible because at a certain point, everybody in the population can't be LGBTQ. It's not possible for humans to do that. Because we have to reproduce in order to live. So it, it doesn't make any sense biologically. Okay. It just doesn't really compute. And I would put it out there that a lot of the people that identify as LGBT are just confused. They kind of switch back and forth, especially the women. That's very common nowadays to find a woman that identifies as LGBTQ and then they'll just abandon it. Or they may be straight. Like they might've been married to a man and have kids and everything else. Like they, they could be married to a man, have three kids from that man, get divorced. And now all of a sudden they're a lesbian. How does that really work? How do you have a whole family, a whole, whole family of kids, but now you don't like men at all. When, when did that happen? How did that happen? Like what's going on? Now, obviously there's something in their environment. There's something in the culture that's making people identify more with, LGBT and trans and things of that nature. That's what's going on. Okay. And what he said about all these parents in California, at least like, like a, a lot of parents are having trans kids. This is a trend. This is the whole Dwayne Wade situation, right? Kids go through phases. When I was a little boy, I was a Ninja Turtle, a Power Ranger, an X-Man, all that. But my mom didn't take me down to the hospital and get, the, the adamantium on my bones like Wolverine or a turtle shell on my back like Donatello, Michelangelo or whatever. Okay, we just, I, I just identify as a turtle for a little while because I'm a little boy and then I moved on in my life. Okay, people go through things, especially little kids. They trying to figure it out. They don't really know at a certain point how to even speak. So they go through the Google Gaga stage and then they learn how to speak properly. Does that mean that you just allow them to communicate with Google Gaga's guys the whole life? No, they're going through that stage because they're learning. They're trying to figure things out. And once they got it figured out, they got it figured out and then they can move forward. That's how kids are. So when you say that a little boy can be eight years old, five years old, two years old and figure out their own gender, they can't even really figure out how to speak properly yet. So how are they going to figure out their gender? They don't understand these things. But yet and still, we have these kids that, quote unquote, identify as trans. This is a big mistake. This is a very big mistake. This is why I say that you shouldn't be able to be a minor and make decisions like that. You shouldn't be able to do it. You're not prepared for that decision. The same way you shouldn't be able to be eight years old and get a tattoo like Mike Tyson on your face. How can you make that decision? So if you can't make that decision about getting a tattoo on your face, how can you also make the decision to become 
trans. This is a trendy thing that parents are kind of enabling their children to do and pushing on the children, not just the parents, but also society at large. You have entertainment, movies, music, all of that is, is pushing it. Cartoons, toys, even. I saw an article where they have um, these um, trans or LGBT, et cetera, identifying toys, like little little kid stuff. Like you have like power, the, the Power Rangers and the other action figures. They got toys like that that are for, I guess, LGBT affirming people. Little baby toys on up. This is something that kids are being brainwashed and indoctrinated with. Why can't, as Bill Maher said, I'm not sure if I played that part, but why can't a little boy just be kind of feminine? You know, some of these little boys, it might be a little feminine. Maybe there's no father around. Maybe there is. Whatever the case may be, he might be a little feminine. Does that even mean he's gay, let alone transgender? Why can't he just have a personality that's not necessarily all the way normal, especially when he's a little boy? What, what is normal when you were a little kid? You, you, your kids, are you going to do things that are kind of strange? Let them grow up and figure out who they are rather than trying to brainwash them at an early age. And what he said about either California is creating them or Ohio is hiding them, I'm thinking it's more of the former. California is creating them. It's not that Ohio is hiding them. Like, you're going to have people that are LGBT regardless of where you are in the country, but it's not that prevalent. And if it has become very prevalent, it's not natural. This is a thing that has been indoctrinated. It's very simple. So, yeah, I'm, I'm totally against it. Shout out to Bill Maher for pointing this out. Bill Maher is still a liberal, in my opinion. But what he's saying was not crazy for a liberal to say just a few years ago. But now, all of a sudden, it is. So now that kind of puts him in a category of being conservative, although he's not. He's just a normie liberal that's looking at things and saying hey i don't like the way that's going so he might mess around and get canceled for his remarks but at a certain point as i close how are they going to cancel everybody they're going to cancel anyone on the right who is outright conservative and then they're going to cancel common sense type liberals like bill maher and joe rogan so who's going to be left are you going to have left on the left are these ridiculous woke extremist people so who's really going to be over there on that side? They're going to be very small in number, or at least they hope they will, because I don't want them to become mainstream at all. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what said you? How do you feel about what's going on here with the explosion of LGBT and trans and everything else? We're talking about little kids, adults, and everything in between. Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. This is nothing more than brainwashing, indoctrination, and it's dangerous, really. It's, it's very dangerous because there's always going to be the next step. First, it was gay marriage. Everybody was like, yeah, gay marriage. Then it becomes, okay, let's let little kids be transgender. But So, so what's next? It's always going to be the next thing. These people are never satisfied with just one quote-unquote victory. They want to go further and further and further. So what's next? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.